So Reynolds number is a little bit more difficult than the Mach number because Mach number only gives us the ratio of two speeds and it's easy to determine what's what. And in the future we'll solve some problems about it. Reynolds number is named after the English scientist Osborne Reynolds. I think Ryan Reynolds got this far. And Reynolds number describes the viscosity of the flow. Reynolds number is denoted by RE and it's also a unitless number or dimensionless number. It's equal to density of air multiplied by the velocity of the flow multiplied by the chord. Remember what it is from the wing parameters video? And mu is the dynamic viscosity of the fluid. In our case, it's gonna be air. So Reynolds number will tell us if the flow is laminar or turbulent. Now, what does that mean? Let's draw a laminar flow. Let's say we have an airfoil. We have a low speed of air. Remember, usually conditions will change when we have high speeds of air. If we have a laminar flow, our streamlines will look very smooth around the airfoil. Nothing bad happens. So the air just flows streamlined or orderly around the airfoil. This is laminar. But if we have a high angle of attack, then something else will happen in the second half of the airfoil. The streamline will detach at some point and here we'll have turbulent flow. So basically we're losing lift. But why it happens is because Reynolds number changes. This will be the turbulent flow because we can't predict the movement of air in this region. Reynolds number can tell us the difference between laminar and turbulent flows. But what are the borders at which that happens? Remember with Mach number we have less than 1 or greater than 1 or greater than 5. With Reynolds numbers it's going to be a little bit different, obviously. So usually the laminar flow happens at Reynolds numbers less than 2100 or 2100 and turbulent flows start at 4000. And remember there's no units. Reynolds and Mach numbers are unitless, so don't write something here by mistake. All right, so now let's finally answer the question of why we need these numbers. Well, imagine you are designing a new type of aircraft. How would you check the flight properties of that aircraft? Would you build a huge life-size model and then go fly it? Obviously no. First, we put the small size or small version of that aircraft into a wind tunnel, which is also a big structure, so it's also expensive, but less expensive than building the big size model. So when we test this little model in the wind tunnel, we get out specific properties of that model. And those properties we measure are going to be Mach and Reynolds numbers. So when we finally build the large model or full-size model of that aircraft or rocket, we will still have those numbers. So let's say in a wind tunnel, we got a Reynolds number one with density of air, with velocity one and chord length one, which is gonna be small. Viscosity is gonna be low because we don't have as much air. And in the second case, when we have a full-size model, we will have a different velocity, different chord lengths, and probably different viscosity. But this airfoil and this full-size airfoil will behave the same. They will give us the same Reynolds number out. So the importance of Mach and Reynolds numbers is that we can predict the behavior or the properties of a full-size aircraft based on experiments in the wind tunnel. Isn't this amazing? It's pretty cool. I hope you agree with that. So on this, we will end this video. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and like this video if it was helpful.